Hi everyone and welcome to Hudson and Thames YouTube channel. Today's video is dedicated to introduction to filters. A quick note about me. My name is Ilya Barzi and I am a quantitative research team lead at Hudson and Thames. If you would like to discuss any of the contents of this presentation outside of the YouTube and YouTube comments, you can message me under this social media. Also, please note that the link to this exact slides that you'll be seeing throughout this presentation are available in the description section in the description section under this video. The contents of today's presentation are the following. We'll be covering two filters, the custom and the Z-score filters. We'll draw a brief comparison between the two and describe some of the use cases. In the very end, there will be a reference section with the links to the original works. If you would like to get a deeper understanding behind how these algorithms work, what might be the use cases and how they can be useful to solve your specific problem. A brief introduction. The ideas covered in this presentation, as well as the custom filter itself, are well described in the book Advances in Financial Machine Learning by Professor Marcus Lopez de Prado, exactly at the very end of the chapter two of the book. The filters that we are going to be describing are set of event-based sampling tools, and they can be used for the following, but not limiting them to detecting structural breaks, extracting signals from data, and detecting microstructural phenomena. These extracted signals or events can later be used to train a machine learning algorithm to trade such events in set circumstances. I would like to also note that the algorithms presented here are available in the MLFinLab Python package. An MLFinLab Python package is a great tool for you to use to construct your own machine learning trading strategy. If you'll be getting the package alongside with the production level algorithms, which are many out there in the package, you'll be also getting access to well-detailed documentation for set functions, uh, links to research notebooks where you can play around with the algorithms and learn more about how they work, and set of educational videos. If you'd like to find out more about the package, feel free to go to our webpage at hudsonandthames.org. First, the custom filter, and a brief historical note behind it. The custom filter belongs to a family of control chart techniques, and these techniques existed since the 1930s, mainly used in manufacturing to monitor and check the quality of the produced goods. These charts can be divided into the following set of families. So the Schuart, cumulative sum, moving average, and geometric moving average charts. And the nature of set uh, quality of control tools and some of the tools used in financial machine, uh, sorry, financial markets are pretty similar. So the works began appearing using one tools in another area of research and vice versa. One of the first such works was the paper by Lam and Yam from 1997, where authors noted this possibility to use one set of algorithms in financial machine, uh, sorry, in financial markets, and also proposed the trading strategies uh, based on the custom filter. But the custom filter themselves were developed in late 1950s um, and early 1960s with the works of Page and Kemp. What's going on inside the custom filter and how does it work? Originally, it was designed to detect a shift in the mean value away from its target. Say we have a set of IAD observations, YT, that are taken from a locally stationary process. The cumulative sum can then be defined as following, which is the maximum between the zero and the previous cumulative sum plus the current observation minus the previous mean of set observations, with the boundary condition being that the zero cumulative sum is equal to zero. The events are then recorded when the set cumulative sum are higher, is higher than some value h, where h is the threshold or the filter size, which is equivalent to this formula right here. Um, this particular setting of the custom filter is an asymmetric setting, which means that only the upward divergences from the mean level are detected, but the downward divergences will not be recorded and are neglected. This concept can then be extended to construct a symmetric custom filter. So in a symmetric custom filter, not only the upward divergences will be detected, but also the downward ones. To do so uh, alongside with the positive cumulative sums that we've seen from the previous slide, also the negative cumulative sum will be uh, defined, which are the minimum between the zero, the previous negative cumulative sum plus the current observation minus the mean of previous recorded um, observations with the same boundary condition of the zeroth negative sum uh, 
zeroth negative cumulative sum being equal to zero. And the cumulative sum itself is then the maximum between the positive cumulative sum and the minus negative cumulative sum. Here is how the cumulative sum filter can be used or cosum filter can be used uh, from the ML FinLab package. First one would import it from the filters module of the package. Then, for example, we can apply it to a set data set. In this case, this is a price series for the GLD ETF from 2012 till 2016. With a threshold of 0 0.05, we'll get a set of custom events, in this case, a date time index that can be plotted alongside with the original price series. And as you can see, the event will be recorded only when a underlying series will travel a set threshold H. Also, I'd like to denote that the code in the MLFinLab package was slightly changed from the original code from the book from Professor Lopez de Prado. Uh, for two reasons. One, to be able to apply the custom filter not only on, say, price series, but also on volatility series A, and B, for the threshold not only to be a fixed value throughout all the observation period, but for it to be a series of values, which means that the threshold can be changing as values, uh, so as time progresses, and maybe the properties of the underlying process are changing. Next, the Z-score filter and a brief histor historical note behind it. There are many Z-score filters out there. The one particularly we're describing in this presentation originated as an algorithm for robust peak detection and is well described uh, by Brakel on one of the answers on Stack Overflow. The link to this exact answer is present in the reference section in the very end of this presentation. And the concept as behind this S-score filter is pretty simple. So if a new data point is n number of robust standard deviations away from a moving mean, the signal will be generated. And one unusual thing that you can see here is that I'm not saying just standard deviations away, but robust standard deviations away. And this is the core idea of the algorithm presented here, is that whenever a signal is detected, its effect on calculating the mean and the standard deviation can be decreased not to corrupt the detection and not to corrupt the threshold and the detection of the next signals, which means if we're seeing an outlier, it may not affect uh, the detection of uh, future signals that much. Exact description of how this works will be present in the next slide that we're going to see now. Uh, here is a pseudocode exactly from that answer on stack overflow, and we'll briefly go over it. But first, uh, the inputs used in this algorithm are the following. The lag, which is the lag of the moving window being used, the threshold or the z-score at which the algorithm signals, or that n number of robust standard deviations at which uh, the signal will be generated, and also the influence, which is the value between 0 and 1, which measures the influence of new signals on the mean and standard deviation. This will be a bit more clearly understood as we go over this pseudocode right here. So first, the three uh, input parameters are defined, the lag, the threshold, and the influence. In this case, the influence is set to 0 0.5. Also, there are a few series of values, the signal series, the filtered Y series, which I'll be calling uh, filtered observations, uh, and the average and the standard deviation filter. For the first observation, this is just the mean of the lag observation and the standard deviation of said lag observations. Then we'll be iterating through the new observations. And in, in, in this case, if the absolute difference between the current new observation and the uh, average value of previous filtered observations, filter observations, uh, is higher than the threshold multiplied by uh, robust or filtered uh, observations, sorry, uh, is higher than the standard deviation of uh, filtered observations, then the signal will be recorded. Um, if the observation is higher than the average filter, then the positive signal is recorded, otherwise a negative signal is recorded. And this right here is exactly where the influence term comes to play. So the new filtered observation is recorded as influence in our case 0 0.5 multiplied by the set observation. So uh, only the half of the effect of the current um, observation, which is a signal or an outlier, is being recorded. The other half, so in this case, one minus influence, or in this case, a half exactly, um, is taking from the previous filtered observation. Therefore, if we're seeing big spikes in the data and we have the influence set to low, 
um, the effect of such outliers will not be that big on the mean calculation and the standard deviation uh, calculation, therefore not affecting the future detection of signals. And else in the case of the absolute difference between the current observation and the average filter not being that big, the signal is zero or there is no signal and the filtered observation is exactly as the current observation. And then the average filter and the standard deviation filter are recalculated as the mean of lagged filtered observation and standard deviation of lagged filtered observations. And this is how the Z-score filter can be used from the MLFinLab package. First, again, we're importing it from the filters module of the MLFinLab package. Then we can apply it to a data set. In this case, it is exactly the same data set. So set of prices of the GLD ETF from 2012 to 2016 with the lag or min window and uh, standard deviation window equal, equal to 10 and the Z-score or threshold being equal to two. In this case, we're assuming that the influence term is equal to one. Uh, the Z-score events are therefore as following, and we'll be, we're able to plot them alongside the original price series. Uh, and the events recorded are very different from the ones recorded in the custom filter. Now let's check the brief comparison between these two algorithms, filters, and some of the use case scenarios. So the upside of the custom filter is that multiple events will not be triggered when the original series are hovering around the threshold events, meaning that the original underlying series have to travel the set threshold H for the event to be recorded. For the Z-score, however, if we're seeing a zone of low volatility, many events can be triggered with relatively small changes of the underlying price series. Uh, the custom filter requires less input parameters being on the threshold, or maybe if you decide to use a symmetric or asymmetric uh, custom filter. The Z-score requires more input parameters than being lag, threshold, and influence. The custom filter is mainly designed to detect shifts in the mean uh, value of the process. And the Z-score is mainly designed to detect explosive or peak points in the series, as well as at the same time decreasing the influence of such signals or outliers on future event detection. A uh, few use cases. So these filters can be used to uh, filter some triggers. For example, filtering of structural breaks. A uh, set of observed events can later be used in a technique such as triple barrel labeling, also described in the original work by Professor Lopez de Prado. Um, and detecting these events can later be used to measure the performance of the underlying process in a set time horizon, say a day, and see if this event can be used in a trading strategy. Otherwise, um, set of recorded events or signals can be used in machine learning algorithms to check if they are valuable and if they can use they can be used for other purposes in a set trading algorithm. Uh, it's also worth noting that labeling every day is probably not a good idea, and uh, researchers should instead focus on measuring and forecasting specific market anomalies and uh, or uh, detecting market movements afterwards. So, for example, one of the mm, misuses of such strategies is having not enough big data set, then uh, detecting, for example, for structural breaks and observing that there are not many structural breaks in the data set to train a machine learning model on, then a researcher might be tempted to lower the threshold and say having every third day uh, as a structural break. In this case, uh, training a machine learning model on such set of events is probably not a good idea and is just a misuse of the strategy uh, or the algorithm. Here, you'll be able to see the set of references used to create this presentation. Again, I'm mentioning that the link to this exact slides that you saw just now are available in the description section under this video. I highly encourage you to check them and to get a deeper understanding behind these algorithms. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that today's presentation was useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section under this video or feel free to message me in said social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And if you would like to be using this uh, set of tools, uh, again, visit our HudsonandThames.org uh, webpage and check the MLFNL package, its contents, um, and message our sales team for more details. Thank you so much for your attention. I wish you a good day. Bye.